a mid-size EV SUV comparison episode just for you here with Thomas and Autogefühl. We go with the VW ID4 in the GTX trim, the all-wheel drive trim, against the Quattro model of the Audi Q4 e-tron. Which one is the best in our test today? And we're also going to talk about the competitors of these two models. Here in the front of the Audi Q4 e-tron, a very modern look, closed front grille of course. EV doesn't need that cooling, horizontal chrome fins big e-tron batching and even more contrasting in the lower part than the very modern style here of the headlamp unit comes with LED as standard and optional matrix LED and the same also accounts for the VW ID4 just that the, we here have this more round shape so the Audi more angular and here a very round shape for the ID4 so really very different from the design they both, however, sit on the very same platform, the MEB, the modular electric building platform of the Volkswagen AG. So the hardware underneath is basically the same. Both are available with either rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive models. And we'll find out more about that very soon. Interesting side profile comparison. Both vehicles are around 4 meters 60 or 181 inches. So exactly the same length, same wheelbase, same MEB platform. Here the Audi, you can see, has design line right here and then it's rather subtle designed in the side and then raises again right there to the shoulder area. Both vehicles come with 18 to 21 inch wheels and both today have the biggest wheel choice here, 21 inch wheels with these aerodynamic fillings on the inside. Contrasting wheel arches, the X, X, S line exterior package that way, right? And then you can see the ID4, once again, different styling, stronger shoulders here, actually a little bit more central in the styling, but more plasticish e here in that case then with the contrasting wheel arches, 21 inch wheels once again. So in the side profile, I think not as different as we see, for example, in the front and the rear. And both also come with their coupe versions. For example, it would be the ID5 for the ID4 and the Audi Q4 e-tron Sportback. We already have a comparison episode of that. You can also check that out in the video description or the pinned comment. Which one do you like best from the design so far? In the rear, very interesting stylings. Once again, the Audi Q4 e-tron with a very modern signature for the tail lamps. And this model is called 50 e-tron Quattro. That's the all-wheel drive model. And you can also, as I said, just go for rear-wheel drive models. Then you have more rear-wheel bias, so to speak. Here then, of course, a little bit more punch, better acceleration figures. And you can see also a contrasting lower part with a big e-tron batching. Then also a spectacular design for the ID4 because you have this, you know, three-dimensional talent signature right there. And also interesting that we have more contrast here where they put the paint, you know, in the swinging style. And the GTX model is their all-wheel drive model in the US. They will not name it that way. Not sure why. I think it's actually a quite good idea. Both come with the very same battery, so we have a net battery size of 77 kilowatt hours and that will give us a range something 400 kilometers, 250 miles, so the energy consumption also in our test was pretty much equal, something around 20 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers, so that's more like 32 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. And both also come optional or included in the high trim models with the adaptive suspension DCC. As for recharging, 11 kilowatt AC or 125 kilowatt DC for that big battery. There's also a smaller 52 kilowatt hour battery available, by the way. But especially if you want to buy these vehicles, you should go for the bigger battery because they are not the most efficient EVs out there. So especially for long-term residual value and so on, you will need the big battery and you also will want to have that range. Acceleration figures, by the way, here both for the all-wheel drive models, also the same at 6.2 seconds. However, you can also go for the rear drive model and still pick the big battery. Probably that is also price performance wise the best choice. Car key comparison, high gloss black for the ID4 and rather subtle design for the Audi. And yeah, it's more premium definitely here with the Audi and door closing sound. Very solid like that. We'll soon compare it of course to the ID4. Inside of the doors is, mm, yeah, it's not really soft. It's not super hard in the top, but rather hard, I would say. A little bit disappointing as for that. Um, also here, hmm, and this one is middle soft, so to speak, so not the best at the inside of the doors. However, the buttons here, they still have clicking sound. That is actually quite nice. And also S-Line interior today. Nice new steering wheel. Look at that flat bottom. 
the, the capacitive buttons on the steering wheel, hashtag capacitive course, a new hashtag here on Autogefühl, of course. Zoom more to all the um, instruments and so on, but what you can already see here, you have proper big digital instruments here in the Audi if you compare it to the ID4. Seating position, it's actually decent, comfortable, also enough headroom with 1m86 or 6 with one Steering wheel, smooth control and very wide out there. So overall, again, uh, some crossover, low seating, mid-size SUV style, but nothing to complain here at all. Good job. Interior overview, it's not a calm design, but you have some nice choices. For example, here, this bright situation in the top part, you have a 10 or this optional 12 inch screen. Zoom more details to that. And yes, a manual climate unit, such a big advantage already here in comparison to the ID4. And in the lower part here, you have the gear selector, a lot of high gloss black stuff here whatsoever. And yeah, the drive select is a little bit hidden down there. So um, that might be a problem while driving and kind of floating console, some more space underneath, two USB-C chargers. And then in the lowest part here, some adaptive cup holders next to this armrest with reasonable space underneath actually. On the steering wheel, this flat two-dimensional design, I really prefer the three-dimensional Audi rings also on the steering wheel. And then you see here, they're now illuminated, these buttons. You can slide, for example, to browse through the menu, but you can still click it, but then it's one button at all. <sighs> really necessary. It looks maybe cleaner and fancier, but the functionality is worth than before, definitely. Digital instruments, yes, good to have these ones here in 10 inch. That's a very big advantage if you compare to the ID4 and you can have different views through here. So that's actually quite cool. And also for example, the map like this also full screen. Head up display, always nice to have. And while driving, you also have some augmented reality functions. Infotainment software with a easy menu structure actually, a very good overview and the you know, loading times, are, it's not the quickest but it's actually okay and here also again the hotkey overview on the left side, they can easily jump to the GPS for example. It could be more responsive, yes, but way better than the ID4, so much better software, they com use completely different software and that's a good thing. And this the Apple CarPlay integration, also Android Auto is possible and the Sonar sound system we have in here is very crisp from the sound, really love it in this segment here among the leading ones. In the rear here, decent seating position, also some legroom left, so headroom no problem at all, so this works and for four or even five tall adults here in the middle part you sit a little bit higher not that comfortable it's more thought out for the outside positions but no middle tunnel here using that ev platform so actually a quite good result here for the rear two usb-c chargers in the middle part climate unit and here you also have adaptive cup holders once again very nice as for the build quality there is also a panoramic roof available just not specced in this vehicle here today the id4 with integrated door handles you have some kind of a feedback from underneath though and then door closing sound also very solid then inside of the door is actually softer than in the audi in the top part that's interesting and then this blue insert is not sure together with the red and red contour stitches not the best styling probably also here with the high gloss black so mm, not so enthusiastic about that then however cool are these seats here sporty way they always come like this in this integrated head restraint style that's very cool the height of this vehicle actually and also with microfiber and they do not offer any animal skin services at all that's way to go for the steering wheel they still need some time they say as for this respect you can see here big difference with the digital instruments we we'll soon show you that in detail but definitely five inch so half the size for the digital instruments and they are also connected to the steering wheel which is to me a little bit weird isn't it hmm. but at least it's always then in your line of sight and this is also you know a good thing to have the controls on the steering wheel are also capacitive here and they are a little bit harder to control sometimes you don't really know what you're doing one means 86 or 601 still a lot of headroom even here at the side this one here equipped with the panoramic roof and um yeah on the ignition you also have a shade for that that's a big advantage if you think about the Ford Mustang Mark E or the Volvo C40 or the Tesla Model X, they do not offer this shade and then people start wrapping them from the outside in Texas, for example. Here at least you have this shade, so that's very good to have indeed. Yeah, 
steering wheel, we had that seating position, very comfortable. The seats are excellent. So to me at the moment, they also feel a little bit better than in the Audi. So the seats here are indeed the highlight of this interior. Interior overview, it's a quite calm design indeed, and here some soft touch, but then a lot of high gloss black and so on. Here also 10 inch or optional 12 inch screen. And yeah, the thing is here really temperature sliders, not illuminated at night, volume slider. That's just not a good user interface indeed. And here also in the capacitive buttons. Steering wheel has this GTX inlet, and here once again the capacitive buttons, very small digital instruments, you can see them right here. They do the job, they are enough, yes, it's okay, and they say, yeah, go for the head-up display, and then, then that's it. The shifting lever is different because it is here at the steering um, column, basically. These digital instruments here, nice visualization, but you know, it's very small when you hit the brakes, then they get activated, and there's not much more you can do there. Changing the view means just putting this one bigger or smaller, and that's it. Well, it's all you need, but still, having the map in there for example like in the Audi would be cool and you can also get a head-up display here and even this vehicle here has some augmented reality arrows they can display infotainment system they did some updates since the launch but I mean the speed is just not okay it's not responsive enough it looks old school look at that you can't offer a car like this with this infotainment system in 2021 and even in this test we once again had failures that nothing was working anymore climate unit you can also control right here or once again in these temperature sliders or the voice control would be set temperature to 22 degrees call number to use your mobile phone's telephone function what establish a bluetooth seriously Okay, that being said, the voice control, the voice input is also better in the Audi, actually. And the CarPlay integration looks like, like this. Um, and then let's listen to the very same sound. Um, temperature slide here. It's actually quite decent. So um, the Sony sound system is, of course, way more expensive than the Audi. But the sound we have here is also actually quite good. So that's okay. But yeah, about the infotainment system, rather forget it. You have a lot of space to put things here, also with these splitters. You can make it more open or segment it. A lot of high gloss black use once again. Then this huge opening right here with adaptive cup holders and two USB-C chargers. But also inductive charging pad for your smartphone. Both cars actually have that. So also a lot of space, reasonable result here. Rear seating from the legroom, it's comparable if you, you know, compare it to the Audi. I mean, here, of course, we have the panoramic roof. So this is a little bit, you know, not fair now because headroom is, of course, closer here, but still works with four tall adults, no problem. Five tall adults would actually also work. So, yeah, definitely, as for the rear seating, comparable with, with both vehicles, also very comfortable here in the rear. However, the cup holders are not adaptive. There you see these small cost-saving details. Customers of electric vehicles like to have frunks. But there is no front trunk here in the Audi and of course none in the ID4. The only thing you can do here is put in some wiper fluid. About the trunk comparison, on paper the Q4 has a smaller trunk, 5 liters, whereas 540 for the ID4. Let's see how it plays out in the you know real world here comparison. Almost a meter or 40 inches in width and the length here is 93 centimeters. That's here. 36 inches and the height below the cover right here yeah some 48 centimeters or 19 inches you see here the cabin trolley well or cameraman thomas so double thomas here today has probably some bricks in here right do you have <laughs> but here easily fits in also in the vertical way and to fold the seats no possibility from here and you also have to go around do it like this and now the id4 well i don't have to do the measures once again because the measurements are exactly the same in all dimensions and also underneath here some more space you can for example put a charging cable there and even more underneath there maybe like for a second charging cable <laughs> but now you might ask yourself why does it have a little more leader capacity well there's one difference here the length in height so to speak here, this, you know, where the Q4 e-tron would go, let's say, like 
this, like this. Here, this is a little bit longer, and that's why you have 40 more liters. Let's go. Let's go.